You you live them. What what are the memories and the, the the emotions, I guess, more specifically, that come flooding back? I just think uh, you know how much fun it was to be a part of, how great NBA basketball was in the '90s, how different it was then to now, and how dominant Michael was, not just physically but spiritually. The hold he he had over the entire league, over everybody, um, it was just dramatic. And I think that's the hardest thing for the young players who you know, didn't see him play, you know, they can see the highlights, but they can't feel his, his dominance. And that's what I'm hoping this, this documentary really shows. And it's clear that the appetite for this, I mean, it's 10 episodes and people are like, give me 50. You know what I mean? Like they just, they'll devour the content about you guys. And I think the younger folks are obsessed with finding out as much as they can. But having lived it, Steve, what's the thing that we'll never truly grasp about what it was like to be in the inside of that absolute juggernaut? I think just how difficult it was. Um, you know, everybody knows how, how great Michael was, and he went 6-0 and in the finals. And you look back and you, you probably just assume he was, he was so dominant that it was easy. It was not easy. It wasn't easy for him or for anybody. Um, and it was he made the difficult look easy because of his dominance, but he had to dig so deep year after year, and it took so much out of him. Uh, but it was uh, it was just an incredible thing to be a part of, and and just amazing to look back and and think, um, man, I was I was part of that team, and to to live that experience is pretty incredible. And what's, what's probably hard for people to understand, whether it's the Krauss dynamic or, or just what you're describing, how difficult it is. Like, winning's hard, but you guys were winning, and yet it's almost like you, you become your own enemy. Why does that become so? And maybe to a degree it happened with the Warriors, where, like, with the winning, you, you devour yourselves. Why is that so hard, Steve? I think just because of a, uh, a number of things, your opponents are gunning for you year after year. So they're not only getting better, they're building their roster for you. Uh, they're thinking about you every waking moment. Uh, and as you go and as you win, uh, the motivation, the energy that it takes, it, it just gets more and more difficult. And so for every team, uh, whether it was the Bulls or the Warriors or the Heat, uh, the Lakers and Celtics in the 80s, you know, you win, you win two, three championships and it, it just gets more and more difficult because it's exhausting and every other team is just coming at you every day. I am fascinated, Steve, by the notion of fame and what it was then because you see it. I mean, you all are the Beatles <laughs> wherever you go. Then and now, right? Because now it feels like there, it's just it's different. How do you compare fame for this Bulls team and then fame as it exists in 2020? I think there was almost a mystical quality to uh, a, a famous team or an athlete like Michael back then. Um, you know, nothing was left to the imagination uh, now, you know, like or nothing is left to the imagination now. Back then, you could get away from it as an athlete, as a player, as anybody in the public eye. Uh, when the camera wasn't on you, you could escape it. Uh, but today, with social media, with people constantly seeing every aspect of your life, uh, you look at Steph Curry, he's a great example of, of someone who's, who's every – uh, every movement is analyzed and judged and criticized. So I think back then there was a little more freedom that came with fame. You could escape it. And now it just seems like it's impossible to do so. I'm trying to picture Rodman in the age of social media. How, how would that have gone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of followers for sure. <laughs> yeah, a lot of followers. But, man, like, you know, like Jordan got a laugh about the circus. There was a, a laugh about the circus there. But Rodman was his own circus in an area where there were still places, Steve, where it felt like you could kind of get away. I mean, I just – next week follows on him. What would people – be surprised about about this guy about like what what he was as a worker or a teammate something that they wouldn't necessarily get. I, I think just how shy and quiet Dennis was, um, the real Dennis. You know, he, behind the scenes, he he liked listening to Pearl Jam. He liked hanging out with the with his teammates. Uh, he liked lifting 
lifting weights, and uh, he rarely said a word in practice. Uh, but when he got in front of the crowd, like you see in some of these uh, some of these uh, images, yeah. you know, he became a different different person. But uh, genuinely, he was. Uh, just a good dude. Guys, guys really like to hang out with him, and and uh, he was pretty unassuming, actually. You've lived a hell of a professional life. If if there's if there's a singular moment or or, or just anecdote of of how the time you spent with Jordan as a bull, how how it has best served you as you transition, I, and I should obviously say with Phil, how it's best served you in this sort of second act. Well, the, the first thing that I would say is that if I hadn't been on those Bulls teams, none of the rest of my career would have happened. And I, I mean that. Um, I wouldn't have become a coach of the Golden State Warriors if I hadn't had that experience with the Bulls. So uh, I feel like, you know, every time I, I see Michael Jordan or, or Scottie Pippen or Phil Jackson, I think back to that experience and it, and it kind of paved the way for the rest of my career both as a player and a broadcaster and as a coach. So I know how fortunate I was to be part of that, that whole uh, run, just like uh, all of us do. That, that was a great group of guys, very mature group, and we all knew exactly how lucky we were, and we made the most of it. And obviously it's a third act. I would never gloss over the second act as a broadcaster because you were, you were, quite, you were quite capable there as well. Uh, but wait, listen, it's, it's always a pleasure to catch up. And obviously we're talking about the past. And the current state of things is something we want to talk about and will a little bit later in the week, Steve. So thanks so much. We look forward to our conversation about things at the moment. And I appreciate you joining us, all right? All right. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.